I always wanted to build a robot base slash vehicle I could improve my programming skills with, but I didn't want to just buy a cheap and rather janky base from eBay, Amazon or AliExpress. So I decided that I wanted to build it myself. I searched for a broken hoverboard on eBay which I would use the motors from and found one for around $15. What I thought was a pretty good deal since you have to pay a lot more when buying a single motor than what I paid for the entire board plus shipping. That is insane in my opinion. Also I am in this lucky position that I had saved enough money to buy this rather expensive CNC. So now I am able to build much bigger projects and the robot base seemed to be the perfect project to take advantage of this new tool. When the hoverboard arrived, I disassembled it and was left with a big lithium ion battery, two BLDC motors and a control board. I didn't want to reverse engineer the control board, so I additionally bought two brushes motor controllers to control the BLDCs with the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. Now that I had some big brushes motors, I designed the robot base in Fusion 360 and generated a lot of tool paths for all of the parts. It was a lot of machining and took many hours through the course of a couple of weeks due to the fact that I had to do it after work. I also 3D printed many parts. The 3D printer is good for detailed and complex parts and the CNC router is ideal for big parts. This part I printed an ABS with 90% infill. It is almost identical as the motor bracket I previously cut with my CNC. Except for the fact that it has far less parts than the CNC cut one. To be more specific, it has 28 parts less, which is pretty insane.
To connect all the links I use 8mm threaded rods, nuts and a little bit of Loctite. Something like this, a partially threaded rod with a surface where the link could rest against would have been ideal, but let's keep it simple. Maybe a totally different suspension design would have been better. I will keep that in mind for version 2. But for now let's finish this version and see if it works at all. When I first put the vehicle on the ground, I noticed that the front shock absorbers were a little weak, so I added some springs. As the base was assembled, I extended the wires of the hoverboard motors and connected them as well as the raspberry to the controller. Later I had to cut the wires, which I just extended, but let me tell you all about that in just a minute. When everything was wired up, I checked if the motors work with just the controller. Sure enough, they did work, which was a big relief, since I had bought a broken hoverboard and it totally would have been possible that not just the control board was broken, but the motors too. But because the BLDCs are pretty tough and built to work in rain, I wasn't too worried. I then wrote some code to control the motors with the Raspberry Pi and sure enough that also worked. But when I sent a signal to the controller to change the direction of the motors there were some problems. As you can see here they rapidly changed the direction which for the one part caused a lot of stress in the hardware but for the other part the controller ran happy about it either. So sometimes they would just stop working so I had to restart them. I tried many things to fix this issue, changed the code, changed the wiring, that's why you can see all those Vago connectors and many more things. But in the end it turned out to be the code which caused all those problems. I will try to explain what happened, but if you just want to see this vehicle finally driving, just skip a few seconds forward. The control board mainly has three pins, which you can use to control the motors. Control input, direction control and a brake. At the control input we use the PWM signal, so we also have control over the speed at which the motors are turning. When we send the PWM signal to the control board, we can see that the motor turns. Nothing new, but let's have a look at for how long the motor is turning. I am sending a signal which lasts one second, but when we run this code we can see that after one second the motors keep running and not just rapidly stop which in my opinion is not bad, it looks more natural. So if we want to change the direction of the motors, we cannot just send a signal for as long as the control signal. It has to stay on even after we stop sending the PWM signal. And that was the entire problem. Previously I put GPIO cleanup at the end of a command which resets all the GPIO pins, ready for the next command. So it also turned off the pin which controls the direction, but by using GPIO cleanup and then typing the specific numbers that I want to reset into the brackets of the GPIO pins, I can make sure that the direction pin stays on. In the next command I then just have to clarify which direction pin should be turned on and which should be turned off. So now let's give it a test.
As you can see the robot base is manually controlled with the keyboard. I will try to put some sensors on the vehicle so that it can drive around autonomous and actually can be considered as a robot and not just a remote controlled car. But for now I am quite happy how the vehicle turned out. The one thing that I definitely don't like about the vehicle is the steering or the not existing steering system. The vehicle steers by turning the wheels in opposite direction but because there are just two motors the front wheels are just rubbing on the ground which is fine on the no load but as soon as you put some weight on the vehicle it has a hard time turning. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so make sure to subscribe for more. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Thank you for watching.